Morning, everyone. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and actually get out your homework uh, for today, we're going to do a problem together in class as your notes. So there's only four problems today. We're going to do one of them. And then if you need time, you can work on yesterday's homework. All right, so the first thing we have to do, we're just going to do number one together, is we have to find the first derivative. Okay, so we're just going to apply the power rule. And we get negative 4x to the third plus 16x as the derivative. Okay. So in order to find the critical points, uh, remember that you set that equal to 0. And you solve for x. So we're going to go ahead and factor out a negative 4x. We're left with x squared minus 4. And then anything that contains a factor must be set equal to 0. Anything that contains a variable. So you get x equals 0 and then plus or minus 2. Remember with the square roots, you have to do plus or minus. So those are going to be our three critical points um, to set up the first derivative test. And remember that when we set up our first derivative test, uh, we have to make sure that they are in numerical order. That's such an important part. Okay, so sorry my lines aren't super straight. I'm so used to notability. Okay, so we have x equals negative 2, x equals 0, and x equals 2. So once again, make sure that when you set up the first derivative test that you put it in numerical order. So here's the derivative, here's the original, and then this is the interval. Okay. So we're going to test a number to the left of negative 2. Make sure that you test it in the derivative. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do my work down here. Okay, remember that we don't really care about the number itself. We just care about if it's positive or negative. Okay, so when you go ahead and you do the math for this, uh, you should get a positive answer. So if f prime is positive, then that means our original function is increasing. Okay. And then we just write the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. Okay. How do we get that interval? Remember that on the left side we always start at negative infinity and then we go right up to that critical point which is that negative 2. Okay. Now I need to test a point um, in between negative 2 and 0 so I'm going to go ahead and test negative 1. Once again, all we care about, if it's positive or negative, in this example, it's going to be negative. So if f prime is negative, then that means our original function is decreasing. And our interval is just going to be the space between these two critical points. So negative 2 to 0. Then let's test another point. So we're going to do f prime of 1. And we get a positive number, which means our original function is increasing. And once again, the interval is just going to be the interval between these two. This is why it's so important that you put it in numerical order. And then our last one, we got to test a number to the right of 2. So f prime of 2. Okay, and you get a negative number. So that means we're decreasing, and the interval is 2 to infinity. Remember that the interval over to the right is just going to go to infinity. So the left starts at negative infinity, and then we just go on the intervals in between the critical points, and then to the right, sorry, um, 
and then to the right goes to pause infinity. So anywhere where we see it's increasing, we're going to write those intervals in. So negative infinity to negative 2, and then 0 to 2. And then we have decreasing on two intervals. So negative 2 to 0, and 2 to 0. Or sorry, 2 to infinity. Okay. Make sure that your entire your intervals cover the entire number line from negative infinity to infinity. So we have negative infinity to 2. Um, then we jump down here, negative 2 to 0, 0 to 2, 2 to infinity. So we cover from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So when we go to graph this, uh, remember that you are going to practice graphing. Um, if you have the arrows going up, then that means your interval should be increasing. So it should be going up. And if you have arrows going down, that means your interval should be decreasing and going this direction. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is find the relative max and mins. Um, and remember that the relative max and mins occur at the critical points. Okay. If you change from um, increasing to decreasing, that means you're going to have a max. Okay. If you change from uh, decreasing to increasing, you're going to have a min. And then you're going to have another max here. Uh, remember, as like yesterday, you can always draw, um, draw this in to kind of see the pattern. So that's what our graph should kind of simulate when we go to graph. Um, and notice that you're going to have a, a max up at this point, a min, and then a max. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down so that I can do some more work. So we know we're going to have a max at f of negative 2. And notice that I used um, f of negative 2, not f prime. So that means I have to use the original function for my work. And then we go ahead and calculate that, and we should get a positive 11. So we have a relative max at negative 2 and 11. And then we have another max at 2. And once again, I'm going to plug this into the original function. Okay. And you also should get 11 for this. So we have 2 relative max. And this is going to be at 2, 11. Okay. And then we have 1 min at f of 0. And I'm going to plug it into the original function. So whenever you're finding actual points on the graph, you need to plug it into the original. And we get negative 5. So 0, negative 5. Okay, so yes, I know that's a lot of work for one problem. Um, good thing that you only have three more to do tonight. So the last thing we need to do um, is actually go ahead and graph this. So remember that I said a little bit ago how this pattern that we drew in on the first derivative test should be the pattern of our graph. So our graph should look something like this with a max at these two points and a min at the, this point. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those two points for my max, which was at negative uh, 211. Sorry, now you go off here and 211. And then my min was at 0, negative 5. Okay. And then we just mimic exactly how the graph was. Um, you could find more points by plugging this into your calculator and finding the zeros to get them to be a little bit more exact. But we're just going to go ahead and do an approximation of the graph. And that's what we should get it to look like. Okay. So notice how we are increasing from 0 to negative 2. Or sorry, negative infinity to negative 2. And then also 0 to 2. And then we're decreasing from negative 2 to 0. 
and then two to infinity. Here are our max, here are our mins. Okay. All right, so I want you guys to work in your groups, and I want you to do the last three problems on your own. Um, the answer key should be up on the podium as well as um, online. And then if you did not, I know less, yesterday's homework was kind of a bit, and the lesson was a little bit longer. So um, if you finish these three problems, please, 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 please go back and do um, finish up yesterday's homework. So um, most likely, unless you did all your homework last night, we shouldn't be on our electronics uh, unless both worksheets are done and graded. Okay, hope you have a wonderful day.